I don't know, like being inspired or had the idea to do these different entrepreneurial um, endeavors. Mm. And then um, it's like they planted the seed. Yeah, 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 they yeah, started yeah. the seed, but then they kind of life gets in the way and then you're doing other stuff and then it comes full circle around and you're seeing like all the stuff that you were doing before were really like templates yeah, or like yeah, models yeah, 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 that you sure. can build upon sure, to sure. kind of go sure. so in on that premise where would you see yourself going from like all the things that you've planted from before what well, i'll do i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna pick up people who got me gave me the blueprints yeah so i'd like to think i'm gonna i could get to at least where they were or beyond you know trying to make it greater later mm -hmm. so i think like i've got influences from multiple angles perspectives but like, if i just think of the entrepreneurial hustler business mentality and i know it might but many people when i tell them this they, they think it's contradictory yeah especially because who they think i am and what i represent yeah but probably one of the biggest influences when it comes to business and my entrepreneurial attitude is master p yeah yeah, yeah i think he really is the biggest inspiration when it comes to the model that i use and the model that i the models that i use when fashioning whatever project that I'm currently in, I go back to the template that he shared with the world, in fact. And some people got with it, some people tried to mimic it, you know, and be what he was. And I wasn't trying to be a rapper, a rap mogul in that way, but I just embraced the principles that he um, applied when it came to his business. You know, um, acumen, all the rest of it with his drive, you know, he tried it all, some of it worked, some of it didn't. But the point I'm making, he got to himself where he's a multi-millionaire. Yeah. You know, and why I was inspired is because he came from the hood, one of the hardest, roughest, poorest hoods, you know, in the States. Yeah. And he made it through. I keep it real, I don't know who he had to do deals with to get to where he got to. Yeah. But the template of yeah. coming from the hood, making it, getting out the hood, you know, that, that worked for me. And um, being that he wasn't the most, you know, Articulate the most, you know. Yeah. Uh, he was proper road, you know, yeah. when he came to, you know, gold, gold grills in his mouth, yeah. and he he pulled off one of the best record deals that you could get in the record industry within the rap industry. He pulled off deals that Michael Jackson could not even pull off, you know, wow. stuff okay. like that. And um, just to think that he was coming from the hood, that's what he wanted to be—the biggest rap, you know, artist or the, with the biggest label. So yeah. he put himself around those people. You yeah. know, to get to those places. Like I just learned a lot of just you know, just tricks of the trade kind of thing that my yeah. friends around me weren't suggesting or the yeah. people around me weren't, you know, inspire me to do. And through the music and just how rapid he came with it and how the marketing strategy, everything about I was just really as a you know, in my mid teens I was just really inspired by his business model. Yes, he wasn't the best rapper, the content wasn't necessarily the most positive, but it was relative to me at that time. Yeah. It was definitely just getting me on my you know, helping to get me on my grind. So as far as where can I get as a businessman, entrepreneur, I know that I, I potentially and we could potentially make millions coming from where we come from with the resources, having minimal resources like he had. I think he said he started with like 10,000 pounds, you know, investment and stuff like that and got to where he was at. So I know there's many other stories of rags to riches kind of yeah. thing. I don't buy all of them, you know, I don't buy into all of them, but his, his perspective really resonated at the time because that was the lifestyle that I was close to living to. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, another big inspiration um, would be um, Nation of Islam. Okay. Um, again, through the music, pre-Master P, my consciousness, if we're going, because we're talking about stuff with rap and rap names and stuff, yeah. the rap artists or the names that were motivating and moving me once I got to a certain age, um, in particular was Ice Cube of Public Enemy. Okay, yeah. And um, both of those guys, well, Ice Cube and the group Public Enemy um, were really motivated by um, Nation of Islam and a lot of the influence came in the music, in particular some of the concept of the context of the, the lyrics and stuff like yeah. that, but what stood out in particular to me was the, the skits that they used to play. What? You know, the skits, you know, the little interludes, oh, the little okay. adverts and yeah. stuff that you have on albums. Okay, yeah. And um, the skits that they would have would have, like, basically, whether it was, like, at that time, Khalid Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad or Louis Farrakhan, yeah. they would have those guys, you know, talking, you know, within the music, behind music, you know, and dropping knowledge, basically, about the black man and society yeah. and 
stuff like that and that's what was basically a big inspiration to me getting into it was the inspiration to getting me into consciousness alongside the stuff that my mum was sharing with me but the music that's where i'm coming from the music the rap music in particular the artists that i was listening to and then their influences which at that time was nation of islam malcolm x all of that was coming from the music so what did that make me do be inspired to check them out check out who was inspiring them and then by the time i got to find out who nation of islam was and was going to, ended up you know I'm, I'm, i left home moved to hackney and in hackney they had one of their mosques were in hackney so they used to be outside yeah, Dawson yeah. station that's why i said when i was coming from my ends i grew up in Glasgow, forest gate stratford area so when i was coming home jumping out of football whatever reason i was coming out of Dawson, i was um would see those guys outside kfc that's what it used to be yeah, KFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they used to be out there with their newspapers and you know paraphernalia, Nation of Islam paraphernalia, and shotting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shotting. And um, I remember the days seeing them going by, walking by, and eventually basically getting involved, never joining, but becoming affiliated by simply going to the events that they used to host at the mosque. You know, oh. They would have weekly events, weekly classes, geared around different things. They had just, you know, the general day on Sunday, like yeah. church kind of thing, yeah. where any and everybody could go on a, on, a, on a Sunday and learn about what they were teaching. Oh. And then within the week, they had a certain classes that were for members only, or mm -hmm. people who were becoming, who wanted to get closer to becoming members, yeah. you know, so all of that stuff. And what I must say. Like, um, the Tabernacle yeah, it's, the, and, they all, it's the same blueprint. I know there's, yeah. there's slight variation in, in the teachings, but yeah. the approach is the same. Well, yeah. and what Marcus Garvey was laying down these blueprints and maps we were talking about yeah. earlier on. So I'm just picking up on the same blueprints and maps that you're meant to adapt them, you're meant to make them relevant to you, the environment you're in, and all the rest of it. So uh, with Nation of Islam, that was my first kind of school of thought outside of rap music where I saw organization and within the organization there was a loads of business models that I liked so they had the final call newspaper they yes. made bean pies you know and shot bean, shot bean pies yeah which I thought bean pie was going to be you know like gunga peas or yeah. I don't know kidney beans yeah. and it was a dessert it was like a pastry dessert thing it's really oh. nice like all these yeah it just ideas because I've heard the bean pies through the music you know oh. but I've <laughs> got a lyric so it's like yeah. and my niggas might start slanging in bean pies you know <laughs> going from sla slanging crack to slanging bean pies that was like the concept you know but nonetheless um you know the tapes the videos it was just yeah. very big like, i saw it like yeah it was an enterprise yeah man so between yeah. rap music and the black consciousness organization the malachi z york tabernacle it was like business entrepreneur was like get your knowledge but get your p2 you know get yeah. the, the, you know we can't yeah. be broke you know, poor, what they call them, poor righteous teachers. Yeah, like, I was know, about like, to say that, yeah. That idea of being poor and broke and having to be that because you're conscious doesn't, you know, is a fallacy. So those groups yeah. and organizations, as well as rappers, were the inspiration for getting the business models going on. So to answer now your question, where yeah. am I going with it all? I'm just standing on their shoulders, just trying to make it greater later. Yeah. <laughs> Push the boundary, 